Good morning, I'm at my boyfriend's house. I say morning, it's probably like not that far off midday to be honest. We got to bed late, I had a gig last night. We've got guests here, they're in the kitchen at the moment. IB's in the bathroom. We're heading out to Big Pit in Blind Avon actually. It's a free day out and you get to do a mind tour. Hopefully we do anyway. But I am gutted, oh. I've just deleted all the footage from yesterday's vlog. It was a gig day vlog. Oh, I'm so frustrated. I've never done it before. I see loads of YouTubers doing it all the time. But I think it was a dyslexic thing because I went onto this camera to see how much footage was in there to see if I needed to transfer it off before I could fit today's footage on. And I saw that it was quite full. You go into the format option and if you format and you click OK, it deletes all your footage and it clears up your SD card to film more. And the other option was cancel. And I just saw them round the wrong way click the wrong one, deleted the whole lot, I was trying to press cancel, hit OK. <sighs> so it is now Sunday and you won't have known that I went to bed at two. Mm, I'm so sad. Anyway, right, let's get on, fresh start, new day. We're in the car, going to a bit. I'm eating breakfast. We're coming through Blind Avenue as we speak. There's ironworks by there. We'll go there another day. We've been meaning to go for absolutely ages, haven't we? Just approaching, look, can you see the pit? Oh, this is a brilliant, brilliant day out. I recommend it. I've been before, but not recently. And it is free to get in. Look, free entry. I don't know if it's free park. Car park, car parking charge. Well, it's the same with St. Fagans, isn't it? That's about a fiver, I think. Don't quote me on that. It's a steam, you can't, there's no point in me filming it. It's over there, we can see some little wisps of steam coming up, but the Blind Avon Steam Railway is in action. Carissa <laughs> E, big bit. Fiver for the parking, apparently. The paying for parking thing is right by the front door here. Uh, it doesn't seem to take cash, but somebody's just passed by and said so you, you can pay cash if you pay inside the building. So, there you go. There's a big old steam train by there. Look, well, I say big. It's probably actually quite a small one as they go. Just been chatting to some people with another Canon camera outside. This is becoming a habit of mine now. I'm just in reception at the moment, been chatting to the ladies, and there's a height restriction for going down the mine. So if you are one metre tall or taller, you can go on the mine tour, and that's free. We're in, we're having a little mooch around. We've got our underground tickets. You get them at reception when you come in, and it's free, but without a ticket, you can't go down the mine. And then you take this and you go sit in the waiting room for your turn but we're just having a little mooch around before we do that there's the lifts there we've just been having a look at this thing here it's called a kibble actually it's like an emergency rescuing thing apparently they test it regularly but they've never had to use it so far They got some canaries in here, you know, because they used to use them to detect noxious gases, didn't they? We're waiting in the waiting area. I can't film down the mine because we can't take batteries down, so I will tell you about it when we come up. It's quite a long time later now. We're just out of the mine. Oh, we enjoyed it so much. The guy was so good doing the tour down there. Really interesting. Live edutainment at its finest. Very good. And I asked him about people who need wheelchairs and he said, no problem. No problem at all. Just let people know at reception what your needs are. They will do a special tour and they do do wheelchair tours. They have their own wheelchairs, which they use underground. I said, do you need to ring in advance if you've got things like that? And he said, no. You can if you like, but no, just ask at reception when you come. Right now, we've worked up a right appetite, so we're heading back to the car where we've got our picnic. We're going to get our picnic, we're going to eat our picnic, and then we're going to go and buy a coffee in the cafe and wash it down with a coffee. That's the plan. Come on then. We've gone back to the car, we've got all the picnic stuff, and we're just on the lookout for some picnic benches or something. I'm going to go and ask this fellow here. He's by the King Cole exhibition. Now, apparently, that's really worth a visit. We come up really high. Look at that lovely view. I've made everybody climb up the hill now. I'm <laughs> evil, evil hostess. <laughs> it was chilly down in the mine, wasn't it? I recommend if you go down the mine, take a jumper. I didn't put mine on till I was down there, and I was like thinking, ah, oh, this isn't going to go over my hard hat. So, top tip: put your jumper on first. Um, what else? Oh, wear sensible footwear as well. Don't wear high heels. It's a little bit slippery in places. The floor is uneven as well in places, so you've got to keep your wits about you. We had some of the taller gentlemen like this in places, yeah. And um, I'd be 
bonked his hard hat on the roof one time, didn't you? But he's higher up than you're used to. If you're not used to wearing a high hat, you're not used to that extra height. Here we go. It was worth the climb. <laughs> we can face each other and eat now. A bit better than a little bench in, in the, you know, straight line. Hey, look at this bench here. That's a beauty, isn't it? You see what we have at either end? An old Davy lamp. If you come on the tour, they'll explain all about how they work and how they saved so many lives. And the precursor to the Davy lamp, the canary. It's picnic time! Thank you very much. Got a cheese roll that I've made myself. The boys have got ham and mustard. Oh, thank you, Andy. Look at this proper cutlery and everything. That's because Ruth's here. We're not normally this civilised, are we? Normally okay. a ginster's on the go. Look at the salad. Yeah, got oh. spot there, you know? <gasps> Mozzarella, basil and tomatoes. The salad is delicious. It's going down fast. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Scotch eggs are coming out now. That wasn't your mum's recipe, though, was it? The Scotch eggs. <laughs> Waitrose <laughs> <laughs> We're on to dessert now, we're on to a bit of natural yoghurt. There's a dollop of strawberry kefir yeah, in, in there as well. We've got one big kefir pot that we're dishing out. <laughs> it's coffee time! <laughs> Where we're sitting right now used to actually be the canteen of the miners and right here you can see some photographs of them. <laughs> Gosh, look at that soft drink machine there. Never seen anything like it. My friend Andy noticed from the other side of there that these chairs didn't have any sort of central bits, like <laughs> just the top and the sides of the backs. That was a very enjoyable coffee. So yeah, it's been a lovely sociable day today. We're now going to King Cole. I noticed that it says the last entry today is 4.10. Uh, it's about, I think it's about 20 past three now, so we're going to get in, get that done, because that was recommended to us by the tour guide down in the mine, so we don't want to miss that. There is more up here, which we're bypassing. If we get time, we will go to that as well. Right, there's no filming near, so I'll tell you about it when we come out. Can you hear the cuckoo? It's relentless. A relentless cuckoo going off. <laughs> We've come out of there now. That was absolutely fantastic. I have been there before years ago. First we go into a darkened chamber, sit on benches and watch like a combination of a film and a separate guy on a screen narrating. And as you progress through the different chambers, they sort of guide you. Like there's not a live guide in there, so it's all on a screen. There's lots of sound effects, different pieces of real equipment illuminated at certain times. And yeah, I highly recommend now we're going to have a look at the bath chambers that are from the 1930s, well the showers actually. We're going to head into the Pit Head Baths exhibition now. The building of these shower blocks in the 1930s made an absolutely massive difference to the miners and their families because back in those days people didn't really have washing facilities in their homes, you know they didn't have bathrooms in their homes and so they would go home absolutely filthy and it'd be quite an undertaking to get them clean in the home without making the home filthy if you know what I mean. There is a ramp as well by the way. Ah, this first chamber here, this was for cleaning the footwear, I do believe. There they were, and it says dirty and wet boots don't last long, so presumably it was essential for the maintenance of the boots as well. You can just about make out the remains of the bristles on those brushes there. My friends have gone on ahead. They had to keep their stuff somewhere, didn't they? Got rows and rows of lockers here. I mean, this, although it's an exhibition centre now, this was actually their lockers. And here were some of those miners there using them. And here we have those showers. Lovely tiled cubicles there. See at the end we've got like a bit of a sort of exhibition area. These lockers at the end here have actually got some things in them so you can peer through the glass or perspex, whatever it is, glass and have a look at the sorts of things they would have kept in there. And there's an introduction to some of the characters that were here. Oh, undercut in there, look, he had a bit of a tight squeeze. That wouldn't suit everybody, would it? If you were claustrophobic, do you see those lamps on their heads there, on their hats? They were naked flames. 
So at this part of the building is loads of glass cabinets with artefacts to look at and read about. The guy on the underground tour was telling us something quite shocking actually. The mine owners didn't pay the men in normal money, oh no, they paid them with tokens that could only be spent in the mine owners outlets uh, and he charged double than they would have been able to get it for with just normal cash. So there we are, total control. Oh, and I always like these mocked up representations of sort of home dwellings, you know. Ooh, cockroaches. Ah, oh, do you see what this represents here? The facilities they would have had in their homes to wash all that coal dust off had they not had these showers here. Oh, and washing those clothes must have been horrendous. We've got some footage here projected onto a sheet. Geological bit here. Oh, look, that's continental drift. That's an adding machine, apparently. I don't know how old it is. It was incredibly treacherous working as a miner. There's a list here of deaths, about 21 killed then, and it just goes on and on and on and on. Those poor ladies there, look, they're waiting for news after a colliery disaster at Six Bells Colliery, and that was 1960. Must have been awful for them. Oh, that helmet looks creepy. Smoke helmet and bellows, that was. That was proto-breathing apparatus. There's a big section here dedicated to the danger, the disasters, rescue as well, things like that. There was a section dedicated to Aberfan, which was a very famous disaster, wasn't it, when there was a huge landslide and went down to the school. Well, we're going back home now. That was an absolutely fabulous day out. I thoroughly recommend that. Can't believe it's free, honestly. Amazing. That's the ironworks there. We want to go there, we haven't yet. And the wind up lights was one of the. That was the English invention. It was hailed the number one best invention of the last hundred years. What, wind up light? Yes, because it allowed people in third world countries to read yeah. after dark. Oh, right, okay, mm. so they can educate themselves. So, yeah, yeah, so they can educate themselves. And it was, yeah. You wouldn't have thought that, would you? Look, we missed the rain, it's just started now. Well, you're going to vlog on Oh, yeah, I'm going to vlog it, yeah. On the bottle. <laughs> yeah, I'd love the bottle actually. I've just been poured out a really delightful glass of alcohol-free gin and tonic. So that's the tonic. Oh, that's the tonic. Oh, Andy's going to bring the gin to have a look. Yeah, I was like delighted, yeah, because I don't like daytime drinking. Yeah, it's absolutely delightful. Mm. You can really taste the juniper. When we came in from Big Pit, everybody had a nap except me. I did editing because that's what I do. And uh, then I cooked dinner. And they played some tunes in the dining room. And now we're going to play some more tunes before bed. And I'm going to finish the vlog now. So thank you so much for watching it. Please give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe down below to watch more videos from me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>